Hey everybody, um, we are going to be getting into chapter 2.5 on migration, uh, starting with key issue number one, where are migrants distributed? All right, um, I hope in your reading that you guys did go over page 78, very crucial page uh, as it breaks down each key issue, talks about circulation, connections, net migration, uh, which I'll get to, um, region and place, uh, mobility, migration, just some big terms for you guys to consider, All right? Um, do not fall asleep while reading this. You will miss a lot of great information. So um, read very detailed if you haven't. All right, moving on. Uh, migration, all right? Um, I'll talk a little bit while you uh, write this down. Uh, so mobility is the most generalized term uh, just for movement with people, okay? Uh, that could be, you know, you guys going to school every day, or, you know, going to the mall or some sort of store. Um, and then another one could be you know, your family's annual trip to Florida to go see your aunt and uncle or something like that. Uh, short term, repetitive mobility would be, um, say you guys went off to lacrosse and then you guys were making your trips uh, to and from home uh, every other weekend. Uh, that would be a short term migration or mobility pattern. All right, so migration um, is, it seems surface level, uh, very easy to define. However, I'm going to break it down just a little bit more for you guys. Um, so migration is a p permanent move to a new location uh, that would constitute migration in general. Um, so there's a difference between emigration and immigration. Um, so emigration, know this, is from a location immigration is to a location okay so if let's just use germany for example all right i have emigrated from germany to the united states okay however if i was in the united states i would say i am immigrating to germany okay uh, so just like it says down below right here in these bullet points if you were to take a and B, uh, you'd be emigrating to this, but if you flipped it, vice versa, um, you would be immigrating, okay? Uh, if you guys have any difficulties with that, let me know, and I can try to give you guys more real-life examples, uh, but I think that Germany one is pretty good. Moving on to the bottom, okay, so the idea of net migration, if you guys were to refer to in your textbook, page 78, uh, in that right column, one, two, third paragraph, um, it goes in depth um, with what net in, in migration and what net out migration would be. Okay, uh, so the idea of net, um, I'll get to uh, Ravenstein's laws of migration in a second, but the idea of um, net in migration is the idea that the number of immigrants exceeds the number of emigrants. So you have more people coming into the country than you do leaving the country, okay? Vice versa. So if you had a big net out migration, you would have more emigrants than immigrants. Um, so with in migration, you'd have a positive net migration uh, with uh, net out migration you would have a negative net migration if you go to the um, definition net migration on page 78 you guys can look at that uh, a little bit deeper but that is going to be crucial um, to understanding uh, immigration emigration um, but moving on to this next slide Ravenstein's laws of migration for this key issue we're really only going to touch on uh, number two and three Two is most migrants relocate a short distance and remain within the same country. We're going to be talking about interregional um, and intra-regional migration, and I think you will find the connection there. Uh, three long-distance migrants to other countries head for major centers of economic activity. Okay, uh, so we're going to look at that within this chapter as well. So when you're trying to you know, answer this question that we pose in the beginning here of where are migrants just distributed, um, you should be able to use those two and Ravensteins to kind of answer that question.
So the types of migration that we have here um, are going to be international migration and internal migration. So for the beginning one, we're going to go with international migration, the idea that you're permanently moving to another country. However, your motives behind that um, either have to be voluntary or someone is forcing you to leave that. So if I was, you know, really into moving to Germany and I really wanted to move there, that would be voluntary. I made that decision based on, uh, hey, maybe there's better opportunities for teaching there, uh, something like that, or I have, you know, family there. I've made that decision. However, forced migration, like we saw in the Trail of Tears um, with Andrew Jackson, with Native American populations, that is forced. The idea of pushing people off of their land or out of their city, out of their country uh, by using, you know, force or persuading them with violence, things like this are going to be more forced. Um, but as far as internal migration, that's going to be permanent move within a country. All right. So we have interregional migration. And if you guys were to look at the map on the bottom of page 80 in the left hand corner, we can see some really good examples that I'll get to in this next slide too of interregional and intraregional. All right. So here are these examples. We have international travel. Obviously, if we're leaving the country uh, to the United States uh, from um, just below our southern border, you know, if we have Hispanic populations moving into the United States, they are traveling, traveling internationally. If I was in Central America moving into um, this area, that would be um, another example of international travel. However, uh, if we look at red, we're going to be in the central part here. Uh, and if we go to the northeast and get out of the central uh, urbanized region that is going to be internal. Uh, let me see if I can get that out of the way. Oh, didn't mean to do that. All right. Uh, so it's going to be internal, interregional. All right. Uh, that red line. All right. And then if we look, uh, San Luis Potosi um, going into Mexico, that's going to be internal intra regional because you're just moving in with that moving within that you know urbanized population um into uh that city center you're not gonna you know get the different settings uh, that you would if you were to do this um red path all right uh moving on to this international migration patterns if i were to give this to you on a test i might expect you to have some examples of net out migration countries so asia latin america and africa these people are going to be leaving uh in bigger numbers to then go to countries like north america europe um and uh other um asianic areas um and they're going for economic prosperity, all right? Um, you're not going to see a lot of people uh, within these in-migration countries moving to these countries, uh, but you might see them moving amongst each other, all right? Uh, moving on here, global migration patterns. Nothing big here. I think this is just a really good visual, so then we can see um, the net in-migrations from, uh, you know, to countries to, you know, more developed countries such as um, Canada and America and then Europe. Uh, these thicker lines, as you can see down here, uh, represent 500,000 people, I believe that was. Um, yes, 500,000 people. Um, and then you can also see the average annual net migration from 2000 to 2005, um, with the United States being above 100,000 uh, annually. Okay. Uh, moving on to... U.S. migration patterns. So something big with this U.S. immigration patterns, um, th these three main eras that we're talking about here um, in U.S. history, colonial settlement, mass European immigration in the 19th and early 20th centuries, uh, and then Asian and Latin American integration, uh, which is going to be more of, you know, late 1900s, uh, mid 1900s to today. Um, if you guys were to go in your book on page 82 to 83, uh, it will define different times. So with the 17th and 18th century, we're talking about Europeans coming over um, into like 
you know, Jamestown, Plymouth, Massachusetts, and, you know, areas along the East Coast. Um, but then you're also looking at Sub-Saharan African peoples who are moving um, in a forced migration pattern uh, through slavery, okay? So you guys should be able to know in each, you know, with Europe and Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, 1840s and 50s with Irish and German immigrants and uh, Scandinavian Irish and German in the 1870s. Um, and then moving on, you would need to know uh, Asian populations and Latin American countries, um, populations who have moved into the United States. Uh, moving on, uh, this is just, just going to show you a visual of, you know, what are, you know, and this is a pretty good infographic, I would have to admit. Um, it shows you a pretty uh, accurate depiction of how many people uh, are moving from each country based on this key here. Um, and then once they are coming into the United States, uh, here is where they're settling. Uh, not a whole lot of people want to come to Wisconsin, which is disappointing because we have a lot of cows and they're the best animal in the world. Um, but a lot of people, uh, especially Hispanic populations, um, would be settling in uh, California uh, as, long, as well as uh, Asian populations, Texas, and then Florida as well. Um, New York, big hub, highly populated area. Um, but yeah, not a lot of people in North and South Dakota, uh, Idaho, who wants to hang out with a bunch of potatoes all day anyways. Um, anywho. Um, so, uh, migration transition model. Um, I'm actually going to go through this individually um, just because I think it's... Um, it's a very it's a big topic, uh, but basically what you guys need to know is this aligns pretty well with the DTM. So um, if we're talking about stage one here, uh, we're going to be talking about these you know nomadic people who are hunters and gatherers, and then you're going to see that seasonal migration. Hey, if it's uh, cold here, we need to move someone somewhere warm, um, or when we use up some of the resources here, we're going to move to another area and let that area regrow things like that and then moving on to stage two we're going to be seeing a high international emigration so you're going to be seeing a lot of um, people moving um, to um, yeah it's moving to um, these wealthier countries uh, for greater um, greater opportunities from lower developing countries all right um, and then moving on um, three and four are going to be the, basically the same thing you're going to have high international immigration so we're going to you know the united states um, in general is going to be seeing a higher immigration population because we have a lot more opportunities for people um, and along with this i actually forgot to mention for two uh, but it's in your little organizer is there's going to be a lot of interregional migration between um, rural to urban areas. So you're going to see a lot more people moving to the city uh, because those areas might be um, better for opportunities for people to make more money. Um, and then with three, you're going to see people moving from the cities to suburbs. So, you know, people, when they get money, uh, they want to, you know, take that flight outside of the uh, the city and go into suburbs and you know live in their little neighborhoods that you guys might live in all right and then um, stage four you can visually see this um, and then a possible stage five the super advanced society uh, the idea that um, all immigration would be like interurban and intra urban um, just people moving within the city centers you know people wanting to uh, be in those central hubs is is going to be what stage five is going to be all about. And then internationally, they just have a continued rise of people moving in. Uh, you have a, a, a subtle positive net in migration. All right. Um, I just want to quick go back to this migration slide because I did goof and I realized it while I was saying it, but I didn't want to um, go back on this. Um, so my example of Germany. So if I was in the United States right now, I would tell you that I emigrated from Germany, okay? However, um, if I was leaving Germany to go to the United States, I would be immigrating to the United States from Germany, okay? Um, so just know that a lot of people will uh, use the emigration when they're already at the new place, okay? And they'll use the I emigrated from my home country. All right, thanks, guys.